Welcome I, to another episode of The Wave. My I, name is Adam. I, my name's Nick. I apologise. I think I jumped on the end of your hello there. Yeah, you did a little bit. It's fine. It doesn't matter. You you elongated your ahoy as well. <laughs> so, well, that's just hogging the intro, that is. Uh, <laughs> intro waga. Yeah, exactly. That's hard to say. <laughs> but you, yeah. <laughs> Most things are hard for me to say. <laughs> How are you, Nick? You seem to put two H's in there for some reason. <laughs> uh, when, when usually you don't use a H no, at all. No. So. That's not go. in my vocabulary. Uh, I'm very good. How are you? I am also very good. It's cooled down a little bit these last uh, couple of days. I love the heat. Bring I it on. I do as well, but it was hot in here when I was editing <laughs> the wave on, on Sunday. I'm not going to lie to you. My sweat has been sweating all week. Yep. But. Got rained on today. Did you? I did. Got rained on a little bit, so that was nice. What a treat. What, what an absolute what treat. Absolute treat for you. Yeah, uh, a bit warm that was, wasn't it, those last couple of days? Uh, yeah, well, warmer than ever in this country in history. Which is crazy, really, isn't it, when you think about it? Unprecedented times. Yeah. Scary times. I And, you know, that's, that's just the temperature measurement of my crop. <laughs> <laughs> that's always been hot. <laughs> Have you been up to anything in this rabid heat? Uh, paddling pool. Nice. Water bombs. Good shout. Good shout. Water pistols. Great shout. All that stuff. I saw on the internet the other day. And used and... I saw on the internet the other day reusable water balloons. Yeah. I've had this conversation with someone else this week. Really? Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> Modern technology is just crazy, isn't it, man? Yeah. I think it's basically just like a whoopee cushion. It seems to be just like, they kind of, these ones kind of split in half. Yeah. You like gather the water in and then when you, they just yeah. burst in half. I thought it was quite clever. Eco-friendly. Eco-friendly water balloons. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like it. It's a good idea. We went out for dinner together. Oh, we did? That was nice. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Outside was... of the uh, recording studio. Well, I thought that was fun. Yeah, I agree. Nice. It was great. Nice bit of food and some good company. Yeah. And we did something else on the weekend just gone. We've seen each other quite a lot. Yeah. We have. We had a very exciting Sunday. It, a, it has been a bit of a secret project, although you'd know about it if you uh, joined our Discord. You would indeed. Because we did give an, a bit of an exclusive drop in there. Yep. Uh, where did we go? We went to a movie studio and we talked to a movie director. Yeah, we An did. actual real one. Yeah. That was the coolest thing. Well, I had a great time. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was and, really and, cool. And uh, I really enjoyed doing the interview. Me too. We yeah. interviewed Steve Lawson. Director of Pentagram. Yeah. Which we did on the show a few weeks ago. Yeah. We went over to his studios, Creative Studios, just outside of Leicester. Uh, well, just inside. Well, it was in Leicester <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> And uh, yeah, sat down with him for a good few hours, had a chat. Yeah. It might already be out. It might not be out yet. I'm not sure when we're going to release that. At some point, it will be edited yep. and released yeah. in this very feed. Uh, it was a really good chat about uh, his studio, a bit bit of a history on, on how that came to be, and and a focus on Pentagram. Everything you've ever wanted to know about Pentagram and more. Yeah. A movie which is currently sitting third in our stream third table. in the stream table. It was second at time we've recorded it, but he got knocked <laughs> off last week. But yeah, it was a it was a great time. We got to tour around some movie sets. Yeah, and it was it was wicked. Uh, yeah, we, we had was, a great we, day. We would say thanks again to Steve for Absolutely. taking some time out of his day. It was a, a lovely chap and a pleasure to talk to. Absolutely, hundred percent. Couldn't couldn't fault the guy. Yeah, not that I want to, but I couldn't. <laughs> But yeah, that, that episode may already be out. It may be coming soon. It's definitely coming soon if it's not already out. Sure. But it's, it's go, I reckon it'll go about 40 minutes. Nice little chat with Steve. Yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it depends if you leave. <laughs> depends what I leave in and what I take out. But I reckon around 40 minutes. So yeah, let us know what you think of that. And if you want us to do more stuff like that, introduce us to people who we can talk to. Well, look, yeah, we'll, I, we'll do the uh, connections. Just let us know. Well, yeah. if you, is that the sort of thing you want to hear more of? from us definitely it's definitely the sort of thing we want to be doing so yeah hopefully it's what you want to be hearing it otherwise we'll be shouting at the cloud exactly <laughs> which again could be entertaining yes uh, you know you sure can record is. anything these days you can indeed <laughs> absolutely <laughs> uh, while we're on the subject of episodes and things being weird um there won't be a wave next monday no nope. somebody's jetting off on holiday driving off on holiday driving off on yes. holiday <laughs> so uh, unfortunately we were we can we can record ahead for the movie shows, but we can't really predict what's going to happen in the news. I could have a go again, but 
<laughs> I think it might get a bit fantastical and uh, also not be true. So. Yeah, heck so, absolutely. So we like to be truthful on this podcast. Our, so. our journalistic integrity must remain. So you'll still get a movie show this Thursday, which will be the film that we're about to do. Yes. Hard times. Hard, hard, no. Yes. 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 <laughs> hard, hard times. times. <laughs> That's what it's called. It's got two titles. It's confusing. And there'll be a movie show next Thursday. We won't miss any movie shows, but there just won't be a wave on Monday. Yeah. Excellent. That's the admin done. Should we do some Netflix news? Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. What have we got? Uh, let's talk about Netflix financials. Yes, let's do it. That's always a fun subject. For the first time ever, Netflix may be happy to have lost one million users. Yes. They may be very happy for in that. In quarter two of 2022. Why may they be happy, you ask? Because they thought they were going to lose two. I thought you were going to say, <laughs> why are they happy? <laughs> uh, because they thought they were going to lose two million. They did. So, better than expected. News of Netflix's demise is greatly exaggerated. <laughs> uh, yeah, even they, they their prediction was to lose two, and they actually only lost just under one. Uh, so, their shares actually went up over 10%. Yeah. So, they're not as losing, bad as people think they are. Losing uh, a, million, a million subscribers. I mean... There are still 222 million subscribers left. Yeah. Which is quite a lot. That's quite, that's quite a lot of people. <laughs> Pretty happy, I think they are. Yeah, they seem to be happy. I, I read an interview with one of the all things directors or CEOs or whatever, and they said to him, why do you think it wasn't as much? And he went, I don't know, probably Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, at least it's nice to know you've done your research. Answer for everything. <laughs> uh, Ted Sarandos. Who it wasn't we, him. It we was frequently else. mentioned on this show. Yeah. Uh, said that it is, it is important... The Netflix is seen as tremendous value, even in tough economic times. And to back that up, we have a lot of great new content coming out. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Cool. Good for them. Uh, they also confirmed that Strange Things, volume, season four, volume two, uh, 1.3 billion hours in its first 28 days. Yes. Still got a still week got left. Still got a little bit left. It's doing about a hundred million a week at the minute, though, so yeah. it's not it's not going to trouble Squid Game. No, but it's but, in the same ballpark. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge it's, ballpark. But the, yeah, it's a massive <laughs> ballpark. It's the second. It's the second. Nobody ever thought anybody would get over a billion. It's so. the biggest English language. Yeah, that's that's the spin they're putting on it. Yeah, absolutely. You got, you got to be able to spin it somehow, haven't you? Of course you have. Uh, so yeah, and it was great. So all hail. All praise to them. <laughs> all, hail, all hail Ted Sarandos. All hail Stranger Things. <laughs> well, because Netflix have not lost as much money as they thought, yep. uh, may go a little way to explaining why they have splashed the cash and now purchased their own animation studio. That's been coming for a while, uh, I think. We've seen in recent months they bought a, a video games company. Yep. They bought a special effects company they did they have now bought an animation studio nice uh, the australian studio animal logic uh, who are responsible for happy feet legends of the guardians the owls of gahul they also worked on the lego movies and the peter rabbit movies uh, have been snapped up by netflix cool um so hopefully we'll get some more awesome netflix animation coming soon yeah, uh, Animal Logic has been producing design, visual effects, and animation for over 30 years. They are headquartered in Sydney, Australia, but also have a studio in Vancouver, Canada, because who doesn't? It's a lot cheaper to film there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Amy Reinhard, who is the Netflix vice president of studio operations, said that we have been investing in animation over the past few years, and this furthers our commitment to building a world class animation studio. Animal Logic is a leading animation studio with innovative technology that will strengthen our existing business and increase our capacity and animation space so that we can better entertain our members around the world. Sweet. Why do you only ever hear from vice presidents? <laughs> Well, it's always Netflix vice president of whatever. It's never Netflix president of whatever. Well, you got uh, the roll out the CEO, CEO sometimes. Yeah, occasionally he makes an appearance. But it, <laughs> if you want somebody lower level, it's always a vice president of something, something. Weird. <laughs> I, Just I an can't observation say I noticed, I've noticed, but that's fine. I'm going to point it out every time it happens now. 
Do you like, it might happen in this very <laughs> news roundup, I'm not sure, I can't remember. Do you like Christmas? I love Christmas, you know this. Uh, maybe not so much in July, but yeah. you know, it will soon be Christmas. And It won't be long. Netflix have released their first look in the, in the form of some images of their adaptation of Scrooge, A Christmas Carol. We mentioned this a few weeks ago, didn't we, that they were doing That this. it was coming, yeah. yeah there's, yeah. there's a lot more detail that's come out. We've got a couple of stills that's quite uh, pretty. released. Um, it's going to be directed by Stephen Donnelly. Uh, the cast includes Luke Evans playing Scrooge, Jonathan Price as the ghost of Jacob Marley, uh, Olivia Coleman, ever present in anything, really. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Dion Nicholas, Johnny Flynn, Jesse Buckley, Fra Free. Who? Giles Torreira and James Cosmo. Who's Frothy? Frothy. Frothy, who's that? I don't know. I have heard the it's name. Oh, like my coffee. I, I couldn't. Frothy, coffee. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Uh, this adaptation yep. is also going to have some musical numbers. Nice. So. A musical Christmas carol. This will be a Christmassy sing along. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, I mean. I, it might be great, but when when your sort of musical version of cri- the Christmas Carol that you've got to aim for is the Muppets, yeah, one, there is that. You're taking on a big hitter That's, there, aren't yeah, you? You are. You certainly it's, are. It's my dad's favourite Christmas movie. The Muppet is it really? Christmas Carol. Yeah, oh, watches nice. it every year. Bless him. <laughs> it says Scrooge: A Christmas Carol will premiere on Netflix later this year. I wonder what month that will come out in. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Um, Probably October. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Just around Halloween, I imagine. <laughs> Next. Another first look at an upcoming Netflix movie uh, is Do Revenge. Do Revenge? Yeah, it stars Stranger Things' own Maya Hawke. Okay. And Riverdale's own Camilla Mendes. Nice. It's an upcoming dark comedy. Okay. Uh, in which basically these two uh, high school students make a pact to take down each other's bullies. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Dre, played by Camilla Mendes, wants to get back at her boyfriend for leaking her sex tape. And Eleanor, played by Maya Hawke, uh, wants to get back at the girl who outed her at school. Nice. Okay. Um, You know... Could be all right. Yeah, it sounds interesting. It's a good idea. What is one of the most interesting things about this movie, yeah, though, is that they changed. They were so keen to have these two in the lead roles uh, that they completely changed the setting of the movie. They changed uh, the location of the movie. Oh wow! Uh, just so that they could they could keep these two in place. Um, it was supposed to be shot and set in Los Angeles. Uh, they actually moved the shoot to Atlanta so it could be shot at the same time as Stranger Things 4 just to keep my hawk in it. Uh, and it was rewritten so it is now set in Miami. Wow, okay. Um, yeah. So six weeks before they uh, they rolled, they just up and changed, changed the everything. whole thing. It's crazy. Which is quite the, it's quite the sort of Show of support from your your boss, isn't 100%, it? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, really want you to be in this movie. We're 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 just packing all the cases up now. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we'll come, come to you. We'll come to you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's trying to capitalize on the Stranger Things thing. There's a there's a bonus sure. there for them as well. Yeah, the 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 female cast of Stranger Things seem to do a lot better than the male cast of Stranger Things in oh, getting getting roles. I don't know why, but it's, it seems to be the case. I'm looking forward to that. It's coming quite soon as well, according to this. Yeah, September the 16th. Nice. That's not even that long away. It's, it's really not. It's less than two months. I suppose then if it was filmed at the same time as Stranger Things 4, that's been filmed for, for a while. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. My Hawk's actually not done any acting for like three years. No, probably not. <laughs> that's why none of them can get any roles. They're all like out <laughs> of practice. Next. Okay. Now, are you sitting down? Yep. Yes, you are. I can I see that. I am indeed. I, I am absolutely uh, disappointed to announce that this week Netflix has ended its at Netflix helps account on Twitter. 
Okay. You can no longer use Twitter to get customer service help for Netflix. Interesting. After 13 years and just under 1 million tweets. Blimey. <laughs> That's a lot of tweets. Um, yeah. You can. Uh, they've moved all their customer support stuff to company-owned platforms only. Oh. They should probably think about doing that with their video content. Yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon, <laughs> coming back to what we spoke about yeah. last week, about Tudum just being on, on YouTube. YouTube? Yeah, yeah um, this 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 account has been there since the old uh, DVD days. Wow. That poor person who's run that since 2009. Do you reckon it's one guy? <laughs> it's yeah, one guy since 2009. Uh, so if you need customer support from Netflix, do you know how you'd get it? No, I haven't got a Call them. Actually. Call them? Yeah, by phone. I'm going to ring Netflix. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, online chat through the website. Okay. Uh, or also you can contact them through your app on Android, iOS phones, or tablets. Right. Fair enough. If you have anything to know. Do you, know, do you want to know what the very first tweet from at Netflix helps was? Yes, in absolutely. March 2009. Do. I absolutely do. Uh, it was a announcement notifying customers that for some reason, the DVD release of the horror movie Let the Right One In had subtitles that were different from the theatrical release. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just in case there's anybody who's like seen it a hundred times at the cinema and would have noticed that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, Jonas didn't say that in the uh, <laughs> cinematic release. Wow. So It's been go. a long time. 900,000 tweets later and they're done. Yeah. End of an era. Crazy. That's hopefully signals the downfall of twitter maybe that's maybe that's what's happening <laughs> i don't think netflix removing an account that's followed by about yeah, but a quarter start a, of a million people it'll start a stream a steamroller effect won't it? you know given the fact we've just had there's 222 million subscribers yeah. and 250,000 were following that account yeah it's, it's probably many, done well to last this long yeah it probably has to be fair uh do you like horror yeah i know you do do you like buses buses uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah. Do you like mirrors? Well, then you're not in luck. <laughs> you didn't even me answer the mirrors. I don't like mirrors. They show me <laughs> me. Because Netflix has a new supernatural series uh, uh, called The Girl in the Mirror. Okay. Uh, about a girl who survives a bus crash. It's a Spanish horror. Oh, we do like Spanish on this show. show. Uh, and it arrives on Netflix on August the 19th. Uh, it is from Sergio G. Sanchez. He is the writer, and he also wrote The Orphanage. Okay. And The Impossible. Nice. Uh, he has also done some work on Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, uh, and A Monster Calls. Uh, there is now a trailer you can go and look at. Uh, it, the synopsis says that uh, the girl in the mirror follows a young girl, girl called Alma, who survives a bus crash that killed most of her classmates. When she awakes with no memories of the incident or her past, her parents seem like strangers and her home becomes a place filled with secrets and mystery. Uh, She gets the growing suspicion that everyone around her is lying, trying to turn her into someone else. She's trapped in a world that doesn't feel her own and she must unravel the events that led to the accident. There you go. Excellent. That sounds right up my street. I'm looking forward to that. August the 19th, that's less than a month away. Yeah, check out the trailer. Yeah. I've, I, it looks pretty good. I've not seen it yet, but I will definitely check yeah. that out. It sounds good to me. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I like uh, This show has turned me on to more Spanish content. Because we do always do well with Spain. Yeah, I um, one of the things I do love about this show is just, I, you know, I'd have never seen an Iranian movie. No, not for this absolutely show. Absolutely not. I probably never would have seen a Spanish one. <laughs> um, we've we've been all around the world. We have, yeah. You know, we've been out east, all over Europe. C- coming later on, I've been around the world alone this week. I watched a foreign movie by myself. Yeah, we'll come to that in, later in your on. own time. In my own time, we'll come to that later on. Absolute yeah, that's a... culture vulture. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I th- I'm I'm eighty percent sure that's all the new the Netflix news. Okay. <laughs> There might be a loved one sneaking down here somewhere. Yeah, there may, there may be. Uh, Neil Gaiman has him. got his Sandman. Uh, the adaptation of the Sandman is coming to Netflix. It is indeed. Later this year. Uh, and, you know, I'm not suggesting that that's maybe opened the, the bow doors a bit for, for 
adaptations of some of his other work that may have been stuck in development for a while. But uh, it has been announced that his The Graveyard Book the is graveyard book is to be that. adapted by uh, director Mark Forster. Um, the story follows a little boy named Nobody, Bod for short, who clambers out of his crib one night and out of the house. The same night, his entire family is killed by a terrifying man called Jack. The baby wanders into a graveyard where he's hidden from the killer by friendly ghosts and is then adopted by them. Nobody, as he is called, is raised by the Owens, a deceased couple, Silas, who's neither dead or alive, and a whole graveyard full of spooks. That sounds incredibly weird. (laughs) That sounds like a book that would be impossible to adapt. Okay. And yet, well, how can you have a main character that's a baby? It's funny mad. you should say that. Uh, because that this might be difficult to adapt. Because uh, this was first published in 2008. Okay. Uh, Neil Jordan, the director, looked to adapt it. That never happened. Uh, Disney then got hold of it and hired Henry Selick to look at doing a stop motion movie. Okay. That it. sounds more reasonable more realistic that didn't happen either ron howard took a crack at it wow that didn't happen either uh, and now it's fallen into the hands of forster who uh, is probably most known for finding neverland which is one of the most sweet beautiful films ever made uh yeah he's uh he's got a couple of movies out between now and the start of next year so this will be the next thing he goes to work on um yeah, that sounds cool. I'm not familiar does, with that book. I'm not either. It does sound cool as fuck. I like the I, I like the concept. Have, having a main, having a baby as your main well, character. Grow up. Well, no, I, yeah, I know, but <laughs> you're still going to be a, like, I don't know. It sounds interesting to me. Is that, are you picturing like uh, the old man baby from like Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what should we do next? Let's talk superheroes. Okay, okay. Because Morbius was a huge success for Sony's Massive, Spider-Man yeah. universe. They released it twice. It was they successful. are absolutely ploughing ahead with <laughs> some other projects. And Why wouldn't they? <laughs> uh, Madame Web was announced a few weeks ago. Uh, okay. Already, already uh, cast uh, Dakota Johnson, Sydney Sweeney, uh, Emma Roberts, Taha Rahim. Well, has now added to its cast Adam Scott. Adam Scott? Yeah. He's of this parish. Yes. Uh, Way it, back. Twice. In, twice, in fact. Yeah, you're right. We've done two Adam Scott movies on we our have. show. We did Little Evil. Yep. Way back in the first season. Yeah, like episode four. And we did that sex comedy that I can't <laughs> remember did. what it's called. What is it called? Where he wears a merkin it in does. that nude scene. <laughs> Which was all right. It's quite funny. I, I'm not going to remember what it was called. So you keep talking. Do I'll not keep trying me. to remember. <laughs> Yeah, Madam Web has got a quick turnaround on it okay. because it is currently scheduled for release on the 7th of July next year. That's really soon. That's like 50 weeks away. To make a whole... <laughs> wow. Yeah, but they don't put any effort into their films. Well, yeah. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, you could very well be correct. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see. See how that one turns out. You know, we're going to get that... Uh, Spider-Man villains movie. You certainly are. That'll be fun. The Overnight. <laughs> okay. No, I never would have remembered that. I would never have. No either. chance whatsoever. <laughs> if you like horror movies. I do. If you like Halloween. I uh, do. You, you can go and One find. One of my favourite franchises. You can go and find the trailer for Halloween Ends. I've already found it. It's allegedly the final, final Halloween. Film. So they're saying... I mean, that's not going to stick, obviously. But uh, <laughs> you you can go and watch that trailer. The synopsis says, four years after the events of last year's Halloween Kills, that's a terribly written first sentence, uh, Laurie is living with her granddaughter, Alison, and is finishing writing her memoir. Michael Myers hasn't been seen since. After allowing the spectre of Michael to determine and drive her reality for decades, Laurie has decided to liberate herself from fear and rage and embrace life. When a young man, Corey Cunningham, is accused of killing a boy he was babysitting, it ignites a cascade of violence and terror that will force Laurie to finally confront an evil she can't control once and for all. Yeah, I've seen the trailer. It just looks like a lot more 
fight in between Larry and Michael, and I'm up for that. Was the last one good? I can't remember. Nope. <laughs> no, I didn't think. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was my vague memory. It was okay. It was stupid. It wasn't great. This this film should just be 90 minutes of them two fighting each other. Well, the That's twist, all I want the twist is going to be, she's the mask. She's going to end up wearing the mask. mask. Do you reckon? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Wouldn't be nothing would surprise me from that franchise anymore. Um, she's adamant she's not doing any more after it, so it it it's, it is ends as far as Jamie Lee Curtis is concerned. Right, okay. But I don't think it'll be the last we see of Michael Myers in the movie universe. No, <laughs> no, it's just it's not just too easy to make. Not going to be. It's just too easy to make. It's just not going to happen. The big the big debate is whether he will speak in this one. Oh, really? Yeah. People, people want her to kill him and then him say her name just before the okay. final blow. Well, that, that will, that would, that would make, make it a good happy. film. I'd, I'd be happy if that happened. But it we'll just see. doesn't matter because just kill him. It's, it can still he gets killed in every in yeah, every exactly, one of them. He always comes just, back. Yeah, but you know, I don't know. Uh, to to end that franchise, you can't kill Michael Myers. You've got to kill Laurie Strode, and I don't know how you do that. She's still worth to last this long. To be fair. exactly, she has. So I don't know. You can't kill Michael. It's established that he's pretty much immortal. So you've got you've got to do the only other thing to, you can do and let him win. After all these years, okay, that's what I'd do if I was a movie. I, I don't movie think director. you're. Uh, I don't think you're wrong. Uh, Thank you. We're going to close the news this week. With okay, my favourite story of the week. <laughs> okay, I've got a picture of a man in front of me that's making me laugh. Is so. a wild attempt at trying to generate some press for this upcoming movie. Right. Whose picture are we looking at? We are looking at a picture of uh, 50 Cent. Yeah. 50 Cent. Yeah, we are indeed. Man who appeared on our show a few weeks ago. Yeah, in in setup. Setup. Currently indeed. holding up the stream table. Yeah, right at the bottom. It was it awful, absolutely wasn't it? Absolutely belongs. Uh he's got a new movie. Somebody's going to make another one. Currently in production. It's called Skill House. Nice. Uh, it's written and directed by Josh Stolberg, who uh, was the writer behind Slasher Row, Piranha 3D, and Spiral from the Book of Saw. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, That's a god awful thing. <laughs> Stolberg's done an interview saying, claiming, claiming, saying <laughs> that they had to pause filming last week because a camera operator passed out during production it was too hot or something because he says the uh the gore and the movie scene they were filming was so intense that is hot bullshit (laughs) (laughs) and stolberg shared an image on twitter uh well, I'll read what he, he 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 put first. Yikes! We shot a kill scene last night, and the camera operator became so nauseated that he passed out, and the camera crashed to the ground. Had to step down for half an hour. He's okay now, but dot dot dot. Get ready for some crazy shit. And the picture is literally just of like a knife, some bits of flesh, and uh, some bloody tiles. Um. <laughs> There's no way that's true. I'm not having it. I'm, I'm saying I'm having There's it. There's no either. way that's happening. It is a really the, shit photo to try and make your point with. The <laughs> possibility, it's possible that the camera operator passed out, but it doesn't actually say that because of the scene they were filming. No, it's... We shot a scene last night. The camera operator became nauseated and passed out. Yeah, that might have happened. He might have eaten something he didn't agree with. As the skill house is described, it doesn't say who has given this description. <laughs> As a terrifying satire on social media and influencer culture. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this sounds <laughs> ripe for our show. Oh, I'm up for it. I'm excited to watch it, but there's no way that's true. I'm sorry. Yeah. Skill House. Uh, it is being filmed now. A release date has yet to be announced. Uh, if you want more 50 Cent. No, I'm all right. He... <laughs> Is going to be in the Expendables four. Okay. Later this year. Yeah, they were making that. So I think I've only seen the first one of them. I don't think I've seen any of the others. I didn't know there was. I feel there. I've seen bits of all of them, and I don't know if I could tell you I've seen any of them all the way through. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there you go. Sweet. I like a bit of uh, false publicity. It's funny. <laughs> That's the news. That's the news. Good news. Well done. 
Have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? Uh, I've only really watched one thing. Okay. Uh, it was quite a... Well, not a weird thing. It was a great thing. I really enjoyed it. Um, At a bit of a loose end the other night. So we just finished a couple of things that we talked about last week. Yeah. Uh, and what we can do... One of these things that I've skipped past the thumbnail of ever since I've had Netflix. Right. Uh, yeah. Finally took the plunge. Watched the first three episodes, I think. Really liked it. Uh, it's Love. I've never heard of this. It's um, I don't think it's been on my algorithm. I, the first, it, there's three seasons. Right. It's 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 totally done. You know, it was a, a Netflix original. I think the first season was 2016. Okay. Three seasons. So it's came done to and an end. Uh, ended ju- ended on its own terms. I believe so. Okay. Cool. Uh, it's a Jud- Judd Apatow show. Right. Uh, Paul Rust uh, stars and did a lot of the writing on it. And Gillian Jacobs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. Cool. Yeah, it's funny. What's it about? It's it's. To say it's a romantic comedy, I don't think really. I think that undersells it. Yeah. Because it it it's very, it's rude, it's foul mouthed. It's Judd it's, Apatow. It, it's, it's the love life of some single people in and around LA. Oh, okay. Who smoke too much and party too much and. Interesting. I've never heard know, of it. Can't grow up. Uh, it's oh yeah. For, only seen the first few episodes. Really enjoyed it. Sticking with it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sounds like you yeah. are. Well up for it. Yeah, very good. Good. I, I like Gillian Jacobs anyway. Yeah, she's, she's usually pretty good, yeah. and she's she's been really good in this so far. Yeah, so. she's great. How about you? Um, I've watched a couple of things. The second season of Big Timber has appeared on Netflix. That's my favourite show. I don't know yep. what I don't know what it is about Big Timber that just draws me in. I I but I'm going to get. I think it's it, fucking yeah. marvellous. Something about it just works for me. Um, it's a little bit different this season. They they're not they. are Getting logs out off a beach rather than <laughs> off a claim, so okay. so he's using a boat to pull them rather than his big machines and stuff. Yeah, but this is the lumberjacking series. Yeah, it's a lumberjacking show, show, isn't it? They don't cut down trees; they just gather up trees that are already cut. Yeah, and then try and the dangers of getting them off the side of a mountain for season one. But now it's the dangers of getting them off a beach. Ah. The only drawback for season two is because of that. The guy is his name Coleman. Yes, he's not in it much, oh, and no. he's the best thing about season one because he's just working at the mill because they don't need him on the beach. Maybe he'll so get his own spin-off. Hopefully, because he's the best thing about it. His his voice is just he's so Canadian; it's unbelievable. He's like King of Canada. Also, Big Timber's the best name for a TV show. It <laughs> really is. It really is. It's great. It's I can't recommend Big Timber enough. If you're not watching it, you're missing out. I'll tell you yeah. that much. Um, and then on Saturday night, I watched a film. Okay. Um, I was I had a choice between two, and there were two that we've both mentioned both of them on this show recently. Yes. So there is the Valley of the Dead has just come out, a Spanish zombie a film. Spanish zombie film. Yep. And there is Incantation, which we mentioned a few weeks ago. Yes. Is it is Indonesian? It Taiwanese, I think. Okay. Yeah. It's a Taiwanese horror that was supposed we to be watched, like we Uber watched the scary. trailer here. Yeah, we a did a few weeks ago, and the trailer made it seem I was like I am not going anywhere near that. <laughs> so it I thought, looks terrifying. I'll give it a go. Yeah. So it was between those two, and I picked Incantation. And I picked the wrong one. Oh, no. Because it's just not very good. Oh, well, that's It's not scary. Shame. The story's really convoluted to the point where you can't follow it. Okay. And it's just nonsense. I just, I, I couldn't tell you now what happened in it. Oh, it's gone a, out of my brain instantly. That's an absolute shame. So I'm a, di- a little bit disappointed that I've not watched Valley of the Dead, which apparently <laughs> is really good. So I definitely made the wrong the wrong decision. That maybe night, this week, unfortunately. Weekend. Yeah, maybe. I also watched a film by Steve. Steve. Our director friend, oh, Steve, Steve Lawson. Lawson. Yeah. I watched one of his films. Okay. Because when we were talking to him, he was like, oh, I made a film in the town that you guys live in. Yeah. And we were like, that blew my mind completely. <laughs> I don't know about you. So I got home that night and watched that film. Yeah. And it's good. What's that film called? Uh, Saltwater, The Battle for Ramry Island. Wow, what a title. He's made our little town into Burma. <laughs> I don't know how he's done it, but he did it. Um, he told us that it wasn't very good. I thought it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> for what it is. I think I know what to expect from a B movie. And that's what I got. It was all right. It's about alligators attacking Japanese soldiers during the Second World War. How can that not be good? Exactly. <laughs> There's not any alligators in it, but it's fine. <laughs> no, I, I, I enjoyed that. I, I watched. I, I wasn't going to talk about it, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. And that's pretty much all I've done because there's a lot of. I've not finished Big Tim, but there's a lot of it on there. Sure. So uh, that's. I bet of course all this week was not as good as the first one, but still, it's in the nines. Winging its way to its end game. Very much so. Very much. In fact, I would say. That there's there's three four episodes left of se- of this season of Better yes. Call Saul. I think Better Call Saul finished yesterday, right? And I think the last four episodes are gonna be Breaking Bad episodes. Okay, it feels like we've got to that stage. Okay, 
That's well, like things have, are about to merge. <laughs> things are about to merge, yes. Okay. Interesting I'm, prediction. I, I feel like that's what's about to happen. Okay. So uh, we'll see. The, the story of Better Call Saul feels like it's done now. But there's still four episodes left. So I'm... Exciting. It is, it is really exciting. And it's such a good show. Such a, such a good show. That's all I've watched so far this week. Great. Do you want to... Uh, should we nip through the top ten quickly? Yeah, let's do that quick. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've not done it for a, we haven't done it for a while so Netflix films in the English language in the top 10 this week are number 10 Hello Goodbye and Everything in Between ah oh, yes any ideas no no, no not me never heard of it looks like a uh, going purely by the thumbnail a teen romance the Netflix original by the thing. looks of it uh, 6.17 million hours this week that's not that much no it's not really when you look <laughs> to, at what's number not one not to crack the top 10 <laughs> Um, Hustle is at number nine. Sixth week of release, six point four five million hours. Yeah, this great, week. great movie. Uh, number eight is Chips, seven point four eight million. Is that what I think it is? Yeah, it is. That's like a few years old now, I yeah. think, isn't it? How that's uh, <laughs> got into the charts, I've no idea. Spider Man Nowhere Home is at seven. Okay. I didn't know this had dropped onto. I d- Netflix. I don't think it's only over here, is it? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's. Uh, it's this is a worldwide. This is a global yeah. chart. So. Number six is Twelve Strong. Which is the Hemsworth, eleven point eight million hours this week. Okay. Uh, Sing two is at number five. That's holding its hand in the charts. It's been in the charts for a while now. Uh, Twelve point two million hours this week. Fourth week of release. But also on its fourth week of release is the Man from Toronto. Still at number four in the chart. I've not got to that yet. I haven't got to it because that I feels haven't. like a Saturday evening movie. Yeah, a Pizza and a Magnum film, yeah. isn't it? And my mum and dad really enjoyed it. Okay. So there's a recommendation for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 13.5 million hours. Uh, number three is The Girl in the Picture. Not this The is, Girl in the Mirror. This is a different girl pic- and she's in a different thing. She's in a picture, not a mirror. This is Netflix's <laughs> it's the documentary. documentary. Isn't it? um, I've heard it's really good. I've also heard it's really bad. Okay. So we'll, uh, I need to watch it to make my own mind up on that. 23.5 million viewing hours. Yeah, now week. we're talking. Uh, Persuasion is the number two. I've also heard this is pretty... Pretty bad. Is this the raunchy one? Uh, no, it's it's Netflix's mod. I think modern day reimagining of the Jane Austen novel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it's it's uh, not had great reviews. No, it's not doing well. It's doing all right. Twenty eight point seven million hours. Yeah. But King of Netflix this week is The Sea Beast, number one, sixty eight point one million viewing hours. I suppose week. be pretty good. I've not got to it yet. But, I've not. I've, I nearly put it on the other night. But it looks great. It looks it beautiful. Look beautiful. From the it looks great. It's supposed to be really good as yeah. well. It's uh, it is doing really well. So yeah, that's your Netflix top ten films wise. Do you want to go through the TV wise? Let's do it. TV shows in the English language. I don't think there's going to be many surprises in this one. Uh, number ten currently is uh, Alone, season eight. I don't know what that is, but there's eight seasons of it. <laughs> I've never heard it. Is it? I don't know if it's one of them. Uh, sort of, someone's in the wild. Could be. Documentary type Yeah, it could be. It's a good picture of a bear in its poster. Yeah. I don't Uh, think it's about bears, but it might be. (laughs) It might be. Number nine is Boo Bitch, which is a limited series. Great name. Great name. No idea what it is. (laughs) 20 million viewing hours this week. Uh, Number eight is Kung Fu Panda The Dragon Knight. Yeah, it's a new Kung Fu Kung Fu Panda. There seems to be a lot of Kung Fu Panda content. Yes. I don't think you'd be able to get to it all if you wanted to. (laughs) <laughs> the Kung Fu Panda universe <laughs> is, is, is difficult for the newbies to to where do you start? <laughs> exactly, where do you start? Uh, number seven is the Umbrella, the Umbrella. Why can't I say Umbrella? The Umbrella <laughs> Academy season three. That's the fourth week of release. Twenty-seven million viewing hours. Then uh, number six is Stranger Things season one. Number five is Stranger Things season three. Number four is Stranger Things season two. There's your Stranger Things chart. For some reason, season two's doing quite well. Yeah. It's bizarre. They've all got very similar viewing hours. They have though. those three, haven't they? Um, Manifest season one has creeped its way into... I don't know if that's three. on over here either. I don't actually. think it is. I think Manifest is a show that's been around for a long time. Yeah, there's there's a big it's fan campaign, isn't there? Trying to keep another, keep get another season going. going. Yeah. Because it's, it's been cancelled by about three different networks, including Netflix now. So... Uh, yeah, it's the 11th week of release. It's managed to clock up 38 million viewing hours. Uh, Resident Evil Season 1 is 
at 72 million viewing hours. I've watched one more episode of that. I didn't mention that. Did you not? Yes, I've watched three now. Did you like it? Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. Really? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm only hearing bad things yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, but I know nothing about that's, Resident that's Evil. That's what I think it might so be. So I'm totally fresh. Everybody who's reviewing it is in the lore. And yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about Resident Evil either, so that's interesting that you're enjoying it and it's getting critically panned. But 72 million viewers, it's not to be sniffed at. And obviously, number one, it's going to be number one for a, a while, I think, is Stranger Things Season 4. Sure. Eighth week in the top 10. 102.3 million viewing hours this week. Yeah. Which puts it to about 1.3 billion, I think. I think so, yeah. So, uh, not quite. It's not going to get to Squid Game, but it's not going to be far off. Squid Game, of course, is at 1.6 is the number to beat. It isn't going to get there. Awesome. That's your top 10's done. That, I think Strange Things Season 4 is going to be in the top number one of that chart for a very long time. I think so. I, I think it's going to take something special in to In terms of TV, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Time for real talk. Let's do it. Yeah? Should we talk some reels? <laughs> let's, let's, sure. Let's talk topics. What was the uh, topic this week, Nick? Uh, the topic this week was a Patreon suggestion, I believe. It was indeed. Uh, from Roscott. Yep. Uh, and it is simply, what is your favourite movie quote? Yes. What? How have you offended Ross Cook? <laughs> Look, what have you done me, to it? Me and Ross have got a fantastic relationship, <laughs> and I, you know, what can I say? Ross he just in, wants to hear more of me. Ross is insisting that all of these quotes should be read out by Nick doing an impersonation. Yeah, can't so, do any voices. <laughs> can't. No, I don't know where it's come from. <laughs> Why all of a sudden you're being picked on like this? But uh, did we get any responses? Uh, shall I start with the Discord? Yes, always. Uh, Okay, I will just say before we start this, yep. I apologise in advance if you're offended by any <laughs> of me trying to do different voices. Uh, I'm not trying to cause offence. But that having been said. Uh, <clears throat> right, so uh, the first one was from Wayne in the Discord, who has gone with uh, from the Princess Bride. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You <laughs> killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, great. <laughs> I'm not going to critique your voices. That's not what I'm here for. But I do like that that's quite funny that you've been asked to do this. <laughs> uh, and uh, Chris from the Time Shifters podcast. Love Chris. What a great guy. Uh, has gone with Rook Howard in Blade Runner. I don't think it did even have a voice. I'm just going to. I've never seen it. Blade Runner. Have tell. you not? No. Did this come up the other it week? It did, yeah. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in the rain. Oh, that's a cracking line, to be fair. That's a really well-written line. Well delivered. Uh, Ross Cook himself Yep, went with two. Of course he did. Standard <laughs> Ross. Wait, I, his actual favourite quote is... <laughs> It's from the cinematic masterpiece Road Trip. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking film. Which is, uh, it's supposed to be a challenge. That's why they call it a shortcut. If it was easy, it would just be the way. Great line. <laughs> but uh, he has gone with, My name is Maximus De Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions, and loyal servant to the true emperor Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Well done. I'll give you that. That was good. That's a great, that's a cracking line as well. It is a good line. I, I, I am. Um, I'm not a big Gladiator fan. I mean, neither. I think this, this might have been a conversation in the Discord at some point in the last couple of weeks that I, I actually think Ridley Scott's pretty overrated. Yeah, I think we have had that conversation. <laughs> I think, I, I wouldn't argue it with uh, you either. For, for more exciting content and conversations like that come and join the discord <laughs> uh okay samuel holland yep. in the discord uh has gone for a quote from the godfather i'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse yeah <laughs> nice okay i'll give you that uh alex has gone with a quote from whiplash that's Standard, great film. Still haven't seen him <laughs> since the last time. Times the last few weeks. Uh, so I don't know how the voice goes. 
I don't know if J.K. Simmons is putting on a different voice. He's just angry a lot in it. Do, does that mean I have to shout? There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. Yeah, fair. <laughs> that was very loud. Made my ears bleed a little bit. Uh, and that's it for the Discord. Okie dokie. Cool. Uh, we've only had one response on social media this week because it's my fault because I completely forgot to put the image out <laughs> until fine. earlier today. Uh, but it's actually from Samuel Holland's wife. Oh, nice. Okay. Who is called Sammy Mulholland. Okay. Um, I don't know the film that it's from, though. I've got the <laughs> quote here. You can do the quote. But she, she hasn't told us what film it's from. Do you recognise it? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. It's, it's from... Uh, <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's from uh, The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, okay. That's why I don't recognise it. I've never <laughs> seen it. Which is a really underrated uh, Disney animation. Okay. Uh, and I believe it is spoken by voiceover artist extraordinaire Patrick Warburton. Okay. <laughs> which is a voice I definitely can't do, <laughs> by the way. Because it's like... You can try. Incredibly deep. Oh, right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chose especially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. <laughs> nice. I, don't, I have no idea if it's good or not, but it's nice. Good movie. Uh, any more? Uh, I think that's all we've got this week, because, like I say, I was an idiot and forgot to uh, put it onto social media on Tuesday. What's yours? Mine! Uh, and also, yeah, can't be from a Stephen King film. It's not from a Stephen <laughs> King film, <laughs> and I'm not going to make you do it either. Um, mine's from Fight Club. Okay. Because it's my favourite line from Fight Club. Do you want to read it out or do you want me to read it out? Or what? You, are we doing you, I, well, you can go for it if you want. <laughs> Surprise me. Um, it's, you're not your job. You're not how much money you have in the bank. You're not the car you drive. You're not the contents of your wallet. You're not your fucking khakis. You're the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. <laughs> I love that line. Something about that line just works for me in Fight Club. There's, Fight Club's endlessly quotable as well. There's so many good quotes in fight, from Fight Club. But that one, I love it. Cool. Yeah, absolutely love it. I love that film and I love that quote. Well, I, I, for me, I, um, I think it's a really good choice. Thank you. It's a good quote, good film. I have done all these real talks so far and been unable to shoehorn in uh, anything that references the Big Lebowski. <laughs> Yet for this topic, there are no end of yeah, quotes that's, to choose that's from. Also endlessly quotes. Uh, so I really struggled to pick one actually <laughs> because one of my favourite quotes is simply two words. Nice marmot. <laughs> Go with it. I can't go with that you one. You can now. have it. Yeah. Nice marmot. Nice marmot. Uh, I, you know, I haven't seen that film for ages. I need to watch it. Honourable mentions to obviously you are not a golfer. Uh, <laughs> and I'm the dude. So that's what you call me. That or his dudeness or duda or El Dudorino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. <laughs> but I'm just going to go with nice marmot. <laughs> nice marmot. Always I makes like. me laugh. Um, um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> good real talk uh, apologies for not putting it onto social media sooner that's that's on me I'm afraid it's been a busy week that's fine I, I'm really enjoying real talk me too I've got a lot of time it's, for it it's driving some good uh, I think I've just chat. had an inspiration for next week's as well so I'll fine. discuss that with you afterwards because I'm not sure if we've done something similar already that's fine uh, it, came, it came to me during one of your news items so I think we've about finished a wave there brilliant do you agree yeah What's the film we're doing this week again? Uh, We are talking on Thursday in this very feed about an Irish comedy called Hard Times. We are indeed. Which came out in one of about three years and is called (laughs) one of a couple of titles. Uh, Some some unusual cast members, shall we say? I would say the main cast is uh, fairly unremarkable for a small budget uh, Irish comedy, but then when the out of towners arrive, there's a couple of surprises. <laughs> Just a bit <laughs> that certainly made me sit up and take notice. I I didn't know this particular one of these particular people was in it, and, okay. and then she appeared on the screen. I was like, "Is that is that that what? <laughs> I was like, what on earth is going on here? How has that happened?" So yeah, could definitely come and listen on Thursday. Yeah, cause, we've because uh, well, I've got some definitely got some thoughts on this one. Hard times. Hard time. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's hard to watch. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come back on Thursday and we'll talk to you about hard times. And like we said earlier, there won't be a wave next Monday. Not next Monday. Uh, just a movie show. Just a movie next show week. next week. Uh, wave back in two weeks, two weeks time. Two weeks today. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, loads of time to get. We'll, 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 have, we'll definitely have, make sure the real talk goes out with enough notice. We'll have, yeah, definitely. Um, then there'll be loads of news. 
Yeah, that's true. Expect a bumper wave the week after next. Brilliant. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.